some stories across the world of stories here at home. This is the National News Broadcast. A very good evening to you, Mita Sarachandra. I'm moving ahead to Arachi and here are today's headlines. The government has decided against the signing of the MCC agreement. Vijay Dasa Rajapaksha states before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry that the weakening of the intelligence units led to the East Sunday attacks. President Gotabe Rajapaksha says the state service is a people's service that goes beyond that of a mere job. The UNP Working Committee meeting ends without a consensus on the symbol of the new alliance. Cabinet approval received on rectifying salary anomalies of teachers and principals. Now in your top story this evening, President Gotabe Rajapaksha says the state service is a people's service that goes beyond that of a mere job. The President made these comments joining in a program to award state institutions that have recorded a high performance as per the audits carried out by the Committee on Public Accounts. The award ceremony was held at the Parliamentary Complex. 844 institutions were evaluated in 2018 while 109 institutions received awards. Thereby, specialized expenditure units of the state ministries, departments, district secretaries and local government bodies were subjected to the audit. The awards were presented for the institutions that recorded high performance in the evaluation. The Committee on Public Accounts has performed audits on public finances since the Coburg Constitution of the British colonial era. To Raja Niojitan. By the time he must place a salakana tepa, Unta Yamaga Penman, Dirimat Kerner, Kramavida Ketai, Salakiuti. Api me. President Gotabe Rajapaksha said it is the responsibility of the parliament to make sure that revenue collected from the public is utilized for specific objectives. The president stated in this responsibility conducting observations is a good directive on the path of public officials. The president noted he has had to deploy much of his time to address protests and when protests emerge in between his official duties he has to deploy additional time. Therefore the president says every ministry must take responsibility for the protests that pertain to them. The president further stated when protests are brought before his office, additional time is needed to address these issues. The president also stated the state service is a people's service that goes beyond that of a mere job. Therefore, it is necessary for public officials to act with a sense of integrity. <laughs> ජනතාවගේ <laughs> The government has decided against the signing of the Millennium Challenge Corporation Agreement. In addition, the government took steps to withdraw from the co-sponsorship of the Geneva Resolution. The objective was to protect the sovereignty of the country. When information on the MCC agreement surfaced during the previous administration, it brought severe opposition. The Sri Lanka opposition Pera Munaha raised opposition against the agreement being signed in the run-up to the presidential election. The climax of the opposition against the agreement was the fast commenced by the Venerable Ududumbara Kashapathera. Upon a cabinet decision, the present regime appointed an evaluation committee in order to obtain the recommendations with regard to the MCC agreement. The cabinet of ministers decided against the signing of the MCC agreement upon the recommendations of the interim report prepared by the evaluation committee. Minister Bandulagunwardana said one concern was the steps not taken to sign the agreement in a transparent manner with the details open to the public. Minister Gunwardana notes the agreement includes certain clauses that contrary to the constitution and legal framework of the country. 
In addition, the agreement also includes clauses that can bring about a detrimental effect to the national security, the national economy and the social and cultural aspects of the country. The minister said the agreement contains contentious aspects in relation to the sovereignty and the independence of the country. The government decided against signing of the agreement. Mr. Gunwaldana, however, stated the government is prepared to negotiate the agreement if proposed grants detailed in the agreement are provided with detriment clauses excluded. Many issues, including the impact of the sovereignty of the country, have arisen as a result of Sri Lanka co-sponsoring the 31-resolution uh, put forward by the United Nations Human Rights Council during the previous administration. Thereby, Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunawardana appraised the UN Human Rights Commission in Geneva yesterday that Sri Lanka is withdrawing from the co-sponsorship of the resolution. The government has arrived at these decisions acting on the aspirations of the public and focusing on the sovereignty of the country and national security. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha says the foremost place given to the Viharis gradually eroded during the previous regime, even as the constitution entrusted the responsibility on protecting Buddhism with the government. Now, attending a ceremony organized at the Piligoda Purvarama Vihara in Gaul today, the Premier said the present government has put an end to that era. The ceremony was organized to award the position of the Adhikarana Sanganaika to Chief Prelate Venerable Lela Vala Sumedha Thera, at which credentials were presented to the Thera by the Premier. The Mahasanga many ministers and MPs and a group of invitees joined in the ceremony. The Premier said the present government always acts upon the advice of the Mahasanga. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha said the previous regime was a four and a half year period in which the foremost place was given to the temple and Buddhism was treated with utmost insensitivity. However, the Premier said today that the time has come to an end. The Premier also stated although they are the ruling party, they are a minority in Parliament. Therefore, when a bill is presented in Parliament, it gets defeated. The Premier further stated recently the bill they put forward was to give an opportunity for the labourers of the contract companies to enjoy the Sinhala New Year. However, the opposition did not support the move. The Premier also stated that with the 19th Amendment, the President and the Prime Minister needs to work together. Prime Minister Rajapaksha stated the country was undermined to such a level that Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunavadhan had to go to Geneva and negotiate to withdraw from the co-sponsorship of the Geneva Resolution. The Premier also added that at this point, when the President is hoping to develop the country, it is only through dissolving Parliament and going for a parliamentary election and thereafter forming a new government that development can be achieved. <laughs> Meanwhile, the newly constructed two-storied library building at the Apegama Sheshtarama Purana Vihara was also declared open by the Prime Minister. The newly constructed main administrative block of the Badegama Pradesh Sabha was also declared open by the Premier. The Mahasangha and a number of ministers and MPs were present at the occasion. Parliamentarian Vijay Dasa Rajapaksha says the weakening of the intelligence units led to the Easter Sunday attacks. The MP testified before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing into the Easter attacks on today. Parliamentarian Vijay Dasa Rajapaksha was summoned before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry today with regard to statements voiced by him within and outside the Parliament pertaining to the National Tawhid Jamaat. Responding to questions posed by the panel of judges, the MP said he opposed the appointment of Pujit Jayasundara as IGP and him Sri Fernando as Defence Secretary. He further stated he detailed his objections in a letter addressed to then President, Prime Minister and Speaker of Parliament. However, no attention was given. As the reason given were as objection, the MP had pointed out that the appointees lacked sufficient knowledge and skill for the positions. At this point, the additional Solicitor General queried from the MP as to why attention was not given to concern. The, in response, MP Vijay Das Rajapaksha said, 
Then the IGP Pooja Jayasundar acted not upon the instruction of the President but upon the instructions of then Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. The MP Vijaydar Rajapaksha further stated the former Prime Minister and Speaker took steps to appoint Pooja Jayasundar as the IGP since he was UN peer. MP Rajapaksha further stated the weakening of the intelligence units made it easy for terrorists to launch the Easter Sunday attacks. The speech made by MP Vijaydasa Rajapaksha during the budget debate on the 18th November 2016 was also questioned. In response, the MP said even before the Easter Sunday attacks, he was studying the extremist elements operating in the country and had made the state officials and officials of the defense units aware of the same. The MP pointed out the Sri Lankan Muslim by the name of Abdul Razik was connected with the assault of a big coup in India and the individual was a member of the National Tawhid Jamaat. Now, the Cabinet of Ministers has decided to rectify the salary anomalies faced by teachers and principals. Co-Cabinet Spokesperson Minister Bandula Gunavadana announced this move speaking at a media briefing held to announce the Cabinet decisions today. The necessity to prepare a suitable salary structure in the Sri Lankan teaching service and related services has been detailed in the Vision of Prosperity. Minister Bandula Gunavadana said the state salaries commission has been appointed. However, the opposition has acted in a manner in which no additional payment or allowance can be made on behalf of any contractor for any task undertaken. The minister pointed out in accordance with the constitution, they are unable to override this constraint. Their bias is unable to include an amendment into the vote on account. They cannot make allocations for additional payment allowances according to the law. Therefore, the minister stated cabinet approval was received to rectify salary anomalies in the teacher and principal services and put forward the new salary structure through the first budget of this government after securing power. Minister Bandala Gunavadan also stated the presidential secretary today commenced the awarding of appointment letters to recruit graduates who have been unemployed for more than a year as trainee graduates for the state sector. Around 55,000 received letters of appointments today and higher diploma holders will also receive letters of appointment in this manner. The paddy purchasing program of the Maha cultivation season is successfully being carried out in all areas. The government has set aside 3.83 billion rupees for the first phase. Around 500,000 kilos of paddy have been purchased from the Mana district so far. 27,000 acres of farmland were utilized for paddy cultivation in the Mana district. This cultivation season, the purchasing of paddy is underway around Murukhan. Nanathan and Karakka Kulam storages. Our correspondent states the full contribution of the army is being received in this task. 19,000 hectares of paddy have been cultivated in Vaunia district, while 21,000 acres of paddy have been cultivated in the Mulathiu district. The purchasing of paddy is underway in 11 centres in the two districts. The harvesting of paddy of the Maha cultivation season has commenced in the cultural district. Paddy has been cultivated in an area of 21,000 acres. Now, the youth channel of the Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation, City FM, was vested with a listenership and with a new outlook this evening. The ceremony took place under the patronage of SLBC Chairman Jagat Vikramasinghe and Director General Chandrapala Leonage. The ceremony was held at the Kumarathunga Munidasa studio of the SLBC. The objective of this novel move is to revise the content of the programs in order to produce a series of meaningful programs for the listeners. The program content has been revised upon a study carried out into the listeners' taste and choice. Political discussions and intellectual discussions have been included in addition to the morning religious programs and other programs such as Lassan Udasana, U-Turn University, City Online Jeevite, Hadakara Handeva, Aradhana, Swaradhana and Nidhi Nathira. In addition, as a political opinion querying platform, three programs are scheduled to be aired per week. Intellectuals, artists and people's representatives along with a group of invitees were present at the occasion. The UNP Working Committee meeting concluded today without a consensus on the symbol of the new alliance. The Working Committee convened at the UNP party headquarters at Sirikota today. 
The agreement was reached on the constitution of the proposed alliance, which was the United People's Force. A number of amendments were also incorporated, which included the list of nominations needed to be approved by the UNP leadership. Views were put forward on contesting under the swan symbol. The UNP Working Committee is set to convene this Sunday evening to discuss the symbol of the alliance. Now on to your weather update this evening. The Met Department predicts mainly fair weather to prevail over most parts of the island. However, showers may occur a few places in the Sabaragamu province and in Kalutar, Gaul and Malta districts after 2 p.m. The Met Department further states that wind speeds can increase up to 40 km per hour at times in the northwestern province and in Hambantota, Munaragala and the Mana districts. That's it for tonight's English News Update. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Good night.